Hello, hello, hello! Finally back to the Moscopy Happy Hour, Emilio. Come Happy stai? New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year to you too. Hey, How welcome are you, my back. friend? Eh? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Welcome back, and also to all uh, our friends. Welcome back to the Dermoscopy Happy Hour. It's been a big break, eh? Yeah, it's been uh, almost one month, uh, three weeks, I suppose, right? Three weeks. It's it's a lot. It was yeah, a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I missed you, Emilio. I missed you. Yes, too much. Too no, much. Come on, come on. I promise that we will never uh, be so uh, distant uh, again anymore. Never again. I mean, come never on. Three again. weeks. Three weeks was an exaggeration. <laughs> Sebastiano, where are you, Sebastiano? Sebastiano. Hello, happy new year. Ciao Seppi, ciao. Come stai? Se, you know that Seppi uh, Seppi went to Sicily. Seppi went to Sicily uh, in his hometown, Enna. Ah. Eh, eh, yes, in Sicily. Eh, in the middle of Sicily. Eh, it's a very ancient uh, small city. Very good, very nice. Enzo, Enzo is already with us. Enzo is already with us. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, give us. Uh, Hello, guys. Hey. 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 Enzo, how are you, my friends? How are you? Hi, Enzo. Hi, welcome. I'm, I'm quite fine. You can see by seeing my, uh, you know, black circles around the eyes that I I had to take care of my two little sons. So you know. But I, I can manage it. <laughs> <laughs> How old are they? Uh, three and one year. Three and one. Ah, the best period. The best well, period. The best, the the best one. Yeah. yeah. Of course, sleeping is great. No. It's... Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> Maybe two or three yeah, hours per night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> clear, clear. Emilio, maybe you like to present Enzo. Of course, I will, definitely. But before this, maybe uh, we should start with a question, the, the first question of the day. Yes, 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 yes. Which yes, is a course. very important question since the new year came. So yeah. the question yeah. says, honestly, guys, do you think that we are going to meet in person within 2022? <laughs> honestly, I would like to hear your, your uh, prediction. <laughs> <laughs> I vote for yes. Yeah, but you don't have the, the right to vote because you are a host. Okay, but I want to vote anyhow, uh, and and uh, you know I'm oh, I'm I'm seeing every day to myself also to do a kind of self training. Mm. Uh, 2022 will be a great year, a great year. Wow! Yes, 44. No, 20, almost 20, maybe 37. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think, Jebby? You think that we are going to meet? Yes, definitely. 2022 will be a great year, a great year. Uh, the year in which we will, uh, we will stop doing these things on, on the, at the computer and we will meet again. No, but there must be happy hour will continue forever. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, and so. So, uh, 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 in which way did you spend your Christmas time? You know, with the family. Uh, with because, the family. You know, um, it was nearly one year, uh, you know, I haven't met my family. So, yeah, yeah, it's sad. You know, we, uh, regarding the meetings, we had the, the illusion that we could come to our normal lives in September, you know. Uh -huh. But, you know, it was just an illusion. Let's hope, as you said, that uh, this year will be the right one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure. And you? Well, you yeah, do? the same, the same. Very, very family period. Very family period. Yeah. Emilio, Emilio, we have to to hurry up, I suppose, right? Let's let's just say uh, a couple, just a couple of words for our today's guest. Although I'm sure yes. that every, the majority of people will know him very well, and so. Uh, Erichetti is a good friend, a colleague from Udine, working, not from Udine, working in Udine uh, in uh, Italy. And Ed, Enzo has been an author of, I can, maybe Enzo, you, you remember or not anymore how many publications on uh, 
dermoscopy, especially in the field of uh, in general dermatology, inflammatory infectious infiltrative diseases, among the many papers that Enzo uh, did, uh, there were several important and a couple of very important papers, including the standardization uh, paper we did uh, last year on the use of dermoscopy in general dermatology, which I guess you agree, JP, uh, it's a hallmark paper that will, uh, that will uh, significantly change the way research. Definitely, no, no question. This paper will, will affect uh, the way we are uh, practicing with the Moscow in the general dermatology field. And uh, to, to see the effects of this paper, we have to wait a little bit more, let's say one or two years more, because, you know, uh, in, in some ways, science is a little bit slow, you know. So yeah. we need time to acquire the, uh, the knowledge about the papers and starting using the uh, suggestions uh, in the practice. Yeah, yeah, and what I also like very much uh, uh, for, with for, uh, from Enzo, which I share also, uh, is the mentality that uh, dermatology should be rewritten with uh, the, with dermoscopy inside included in the uh, in the basic descriptions of any kind of skin disease. And Enzo has devoted much of his of his career until now to prove that this is the case, uh, described the, the patterns of numerous uh, entities. And that's something that I like very much and I share, of course. So now uh, we will begin first with, as usually, with the paper of the week. And yes, but before that, is a, a second question of the week. Yes, the scientific question. question. Yes, exactly. So the, the question of the week is the following. How many cutaneous lymphomas do you know? One, two, five, more than five. <laughs> uh, the, Come on, we, we, can, we, we cannot give a precise number. Uh, <laughs> the territory of cutaneous lymphomas and lymphomas in general is huge, right? It's terrible. Huge, huge, it's terrible, huge. We, I think that we will never know the precise number because you know yeah. a lot of them. So yeah. you know, yeah. and many new entities, you know, um, have been published over the last few years. So yeah. you know, we, we cannot keep up with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, but we have to simplify a little bit the approach. More than five, of course, is the is the most voted uh, option, and uh, and we will, by the way, speak about cutaneous lymphomas today, right, uh, Emilio? Because exactly. probably, well, also the answer too is a reasonable answer. Yeah. Yeah. Lymphomas, B lymphomas. That's that's yeah, yeah, yeah. B and T, B and T. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference, maybe on dermoscopy. But we will see. We will see. We will see. Yeah. We will yeah. see. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me. Yes, of course. The logo of the uh, uh, intro of the paper of the week. Thank you, Sebastiano. So now uh, I can share my screen and there we go. That's uh, what I wanted to uh, show you. So paper of the week for the first episode of 2022. Before showing the paper of the week, JP, my friend, I have a surprise for, for you. Wow. I want to test your memory. Oh, my God. Do you this remember? Is such, this is such a nice picture. I don't have it. Where are we? Wow, wow, look at this, you know, you are like a, like a baby. I where also... are we? Where are we? Hey, where are we? <laughs> we, we are in Roma, in Roma, San Roma. Gallicano. Hey. San Gallicano, yeah, yeah. Let yeah. me zoom in a little bit. In... <laughs> <laughs> You're not recognizable, Emilius. <laughs> I still had some hairs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you... you had some hairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeff is the same. Yeah, well, a little bit thinner, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree, I agree. A bit, yeah. <laughs> so at that period, at that period, my friend, one of the things that we did was this one. Do you yeah. remember what this is? Yeah. Yeah. Eh? yeah, the spermatozoa like structures, right? This is pornography, Emilius. Eh? This is pornography, Emilius. <laughs> exactly. Which I have to acknowledge, of course, that this artistic work is was not mine, it was Zoe's. 
Uh, we have, I have to acknowledge that this drawing, uh, as, as a piece of art, belongs belongs to here. So this is when we did uh, this. Uh, I mean, uh, description ten years ago about these vessels that we see uh, in mycosis fungoides, and we uh, we we did a study and we showed that uh, these linear vessels typify mycosis fungoides as compared, as contrasted to the dotted vessels we see in eczema, in, in dermatitis, which was, uh, which is the main differential diagnosis. So this was, look here, this was, this is the paper received 3 January 20, uh, tw uh, 2012 and accepted quite quickly, I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a good period. I mean, things were easier. As maybe, maybe Jeppe was the reviewer as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but let, let me tell you this story. Let me tell you this story briefly. The first ever paper that um, uh, we did together with Emilio was a, a small case report, in, in which was very, uh, very unlucky. And Emilio did something like uh, 20 submissions, you know, because nobody wanted to accept this case report. <laughs> but this went very, very quickly. So this was, uh, the, I would say, the first description of how cutaneous lymphomas might look like dermatoscopically. And I have to say that until a few years, until recently, we did not have much more to say uh, than this. But this was until recently. Now we have a very important paper that was authored uh, by Enzo as a first author, and it was uh, an International Dermoscopy Society uh, uh, study uh, that this is the paper we're going to present. Of course, it was not published in Dermatology Practical and Conceptual, but by the way, I would like to remind <laughs> Dermatology Practical and Conceptual, which is the official journal of the International Dermoscopy Society. So that's the paper published on the Blue Journal in JAD uh, very, very recently on dermoscopy of nodular or plaque type uh, cutaneous lymphomas, T and B. That was a very important effort led by ENSO uh, to collect a good number of lymphomas with, uh, with these clinical characteristics. So we are speaking about nodules and, we are, and plaques. So this was a case control study. So our cases were lymphomas, T or B, manifesting as nodules or plaques. Uh, so classic mycosis fungoides ex excluded in this case. Uh, and the controls were again nodules or plaques that were clinically suspected for lymphomas, but even finally they were not lymphomas, they were something else. So this was uh, the case control design. And in fact, this is what we eventually included, 121 lymphomas, which is a good number of them, 95 B cell and 26 T cell. And here you can see uh, the subtypes of lymphomas included. And also uh, a, a quite heterogeneous control group. This, is, this was reasonable, uh, including basically four categories of, of lesions, pseudolymphomas, a big group, then tumors comprising uh, several different neoplasms, as you can see here, uh, infiltrative dermatosis, so mainly granulomatous disorders and istiocytosis, and then some non-infiltrative dermatosis. I repeat, these, the control group was built based on the clinical suspicion of lymphoma. So this, this is a real differential uh, diagnosis from uh, cutaneous lymphomas. So uh, these are the main results of this study. So first of all, in terms of frequency, the most frequent features dermatoscopically in lymphomas are the following. In terms of vascular structures, the most frequent vessels we see are linear vessels with branches, but unfocused. Uh, vessels in contrast to the focus vessels that we see, for example, in, in, um, uh, in um, uh, epidermal neoplasms, in keratinocytic neoplasms like basal cell carcinoma. And then dotted vessels was the second more, more, more frequent type and linear curved, but again, out of focus. So these were the most frequent vascular structures. And here you can see uh, uh, two examples with uh, the most frequent vessels we see in lymphomas, linear, somehow branching, and not 
sharply in focus. And in terms of other structures, not vascular structures, uh, here the three main things that we found were, first of all, orange color, uh, either in terms of, of uh, structureless areas or in, in the form of, of globules, and then also white structureless areas and white lines. So orange color and white color, these were the main non-vascular findings in the study. But of course, what is much more interesting is the comparison with the control group. So which of these features may serve as diagnostic predictors of lymphomas? And here, uh, Enzo did a great analysis according to, the control, to, to each uh, category of the control group. Uh, first of all, if we see lymphomas versus all the controls, uh, we can find practically four positive predictors and, and two negative predictors. Negative meaning that they predict non-lymphomas, okay? So the positive predictors are the ones that I already mentioned. Orange color in the, uh, in the form of structureless areas or in the form of globules, and then white color in the form of structureless areas or in the form of white lines. And negative predictors were well-focused vessels uh, and purple structureless areas. This is when we compare lymphomas to the total, to the, to the whole control group. Then, if we see the analysis per subcategory of the control group, so if we compare lymphomas with uh, other tumors, such as basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell, Merkel cell, all the tumors of the control group, then we see that we have practically one positive predictor, which is orange structureless areas and uh, a few negative predictors, meaning predicting the other tumors, uh, such as uh, well-focused uh, vessels or uh, white and brown structureless areas. So orange color here remains the strong predictor of lymphomas. When we compare with infiltrative uh, dermatosis, then we have practically infiltrative, meaning uh, uh, granulomatous disorders and uh, istiocytosis. Uh, here we have white structureless areas and linear vessels as positive predictors. Orange color here is not positive predictor. Why? Because in the control group, we have also a lot of orange color, granulomatous disorders. And uh, we have a negative predictor, which is purple structureless areas. And here is a very nice example. Uh, B cell lymphoma on the left, sarcoidosis on the right. Orange color exists in both of them, obviously. Uh, um, the, diff the main difference here uh, is the white color that we see on the left, and it's absent in sarcoidosis, and also the vessels which are less focused in lymphoma and more focused in uh, granulomatous disorders in general, as in this example of sarcoidosis. Then, when we compare lymphomas with non-infiltrative uh, uh, inflammatory uh, diseases, we have two positive predictors, orange color again and white color uh, in, the, uh, in the form of structureless areas. And finally, the last thing, when we compare lymphomas with pseudolymphomas, which is obviously a very tough, challenging differential diagnosis, here we have white lines as a positive predictor of uh, lymphomas and two nice examples, lymphoma versus pseudolymphoma. We can see the white lines in the image on the left, which are absent from the pseudolymphoma case. So this seems to be the only positive predictor for this differential diagnosis. So in the comparison between T cell and B cell lymphomas to the question, is there a difference between B cell and T cell lymphomas? The answer was from the study that only one predictor, dotted vessels, if present, they are much more suggestive of T cell lymphoma, for instance, B cell lymphoma on the left with linear vessels, as I already said, T cell lymphoma on the right uh, with a few linear, but also several dotted vessels. So dotted vessels are a clue for T cell uh, lymphoma. And finally, among B cell lymphomas, we also did the sub-analysis there, and we found that unfocused linear vessels predict marginal zone lymphoma over the other subtypes 
of uh, B cell lymphomas. So, a lot of data in this study, which is reasonable. Enzo did a very in-depth uh, analysis. I think that this, is, this study enriches significantly our knowledge on the morphology of uh, cutaneous lymphomas. If I would conclude with the strongest message of the study would be that uh, uh, cutaneous lymphomas dermatoscopically are, are characterized mainly by these three features. So orange color, which might be seen in structureless areas or in the form of orange globules, as we can see in the image on the right, very nice orange globules, and then white structureless color and white lines. So that was the study. Very I, good. I guess let's, you let's, agree let's, that there is a lot of information there. A lot of information. By the way, there are a few questions for you, uh, uh, for Enzo and you, Emilio, um, uh, from Pascale. You can see white, white areas in sarcoidosis too, or is, uh, is less uh, visible? So I would say that the questions would go to Enzo, but f yeah. before answering to the questions, uh, Enzo, would you like to make a general comment on, on the paper? Uh, <laughs> Yes, uh, as you said, Emilius, there are a lot of data. Uh, you made things much easier uh, than they are. Uh, but uh, I would like to say one thing to begin. Um, when we talk about um, inflammatory infiltrative conditions and not tumors, dermoscopy is important, of course. But after clinical examination, we have to take in, into account one uh, key principle. The two-step rule, uh, we, we, we named this rule two-step rule. Uh, first of all, we have to have a clinical differential diagnosis and then we can use dermoscopy because dermoscopy without clinical examination is, you know, like pasta without tomatoes. <laughs> so this is the key principle. For this reason, we, we did the sub-analysis according to the differential diagnosis. Because if we talk about tumors, there are some predictors for lymphomas. If we talk about other conditions, uh, you know, we have other predictors. So this is the key principle in, you know, dermoscopy uh, of non-tumoral uh, diseases, dermatosis. Okay, the, well, well, the question? The question is concerning the white color in uh, sarcoidosis. Could it be possible to see white color in sarcoidosis? Of course, of course. We can yeah. see uh, white color in sarcoidosis. Less commonly, of course, compared to uh, lymphomas, uh, white color is due to mainly to fibrosis, and uh, reactive fibrosis is more common in lymphomas compared to uh, sarcoidosis, of course. Uh, if uh, uh, I can spend very few words, uh, white color is more common in another gramotous condition, which is lupus vulgaris, okay? In that condition, we have more commonly uh, white color due to fibrosis, especially yeah. in dark skin patients, honestly. Yeah. But yes. And, and did you notice the endoscopic difference depending on topography or duration of evolution, age of the lesion, gender of the patient? This is a very good question. Um, we did not, of course, analyze uh, dermoscopy according to the lesion stage. Because, you know, we didn't know when the lesion appeared. This is very difficult to assess. But in my opinion, uh, yes, uh, there may be some differences, especially, uh, you know, um, in, in terms of vessels, but also in terms of other structures. Because when we have a very compact cellular infiltrate, we can see orange, okay, due to the mass effect. Uh, even for vessels, at the beginning we have, you know, small vessels, linear vessels, and then uh, we will have, you know, branched vessels because we need more, uh, a bigger, you know, blood supply. So, yes, of course, the dermoscopic uh, appearance may change according to the lesion stage and maybe also according to the, the localization, of course, not according to the gender, actually. Yeah. And Another there, question is, uh, which is... Uh, also valid for uh, for several other diseases. When we have multiple lesions in a patient, and in this case, when we had multiple uh, lesions of lymphomas, did we notice that the lesions of the same patient followed the same pattern or not necessarily? Yes, yes, mm, uh, not necessarily. Uh, but 
in we can say that if we talk in general uh it depends you know on the, on the stage of the lesions because if we uh, see for example uh, psoriasis okay all the lesions are at the same stage more or less we can say uh, we can see the same pattern but if we talk about for example pityriasis uh, like you know this chronicus or uh, i don't know uh, lymphomatoid papulosis where the lesions are at different stages so we see a different pattern you know, it, it depends a lot uh, on the stage of the lesion. So <laughs> when we talk about dermoscopy, we talk about the ideal lesion, the active lesion, the mature lesion, but uh, findings change, change of, of course, over the time. Yeah. Yeah. And this is more uh, for Emilio. How do you explain morphology uh, of spermatozoid vessels in mycosis fungoides and the same kind of vessels also found in zoombalanitis? Are there dermatoses where they can be observed as well? Uh, well, the, okay, let's not exaggerate with the spermatozo structure. This was just, uh, you know, uh, an observation that might be or not uh, repetitive. The important thing, the important finding of that study was that in mycosis fungoides, we see very frequently short linear vessels. And this becomes a, a useful diagnostic clue simply because... The differential diagnosis, the clinical differential diagnosis is eczema. And, and in eczema, we don't see linear vessels. That's why uh, this, these vascular structures become meaningful uh, in, in, in the clinical practice. So yeah. now why do we see linear? Uh, I, I guess it's, it's related to some uh, atrophy of the, uh, of the epidermis that is very frequent in mycosis fungoides. There is anyhow a subtype of mycosis fungoides which is in which we have extreme uh, atrophy and extreme telangiectasias. So it's quite frequent that also in other subtypes, there, uh, it's quite reasonable that also in other subtypes there is a little bit of atrophy, a little bit of telangiectasias, which is highlighted with our dermatoscope. So the, the important clue is that linear vessels in this differential diagnosis, guide us against eczema, guide us for uh, mycosis fungoides. Last question. Is plaque stage mycosis fungoides easy to differentiate from morphea demoscopically? Uh, ideally, in the ideal versions of the two entities, I would say that uh, they should be uh, easy to diagnose. Uh, we don't expect to see this kind of white color in uh, mycosis fungoides regularly, as we see uh, in morphia. And the opposite co uh, is concerning the vascular structures. We expect to see much more in mycosis fungoides than morphia. Of course, these are the ideal versions of the two entities. As Enzo said, uh, in real life, not all lesions are um, ideal. I don't know, Enzo, if you have something to add to these points. Yes, yes, you agree. I fully agree with you. Maybe. In mycosis fungoides in plaque stage, we, we see more commonly uh, the, the orange color uh, because we have, you know, hemosiderin deposits in the dermis. But yes, I, of course, agree with you in Morphea, the, the white color is more regular because the fibrosis is the main histopathological finding of this condition. So yes, the, the distribution of the, uh, of the white color is different. Uh, yes, yes, of course. No. There, there are more, que more questions, by the way, coming slowly. One, one of them is about the PDF, if we can send the PDF. Yeah. I guess we can. Yeah. Uh, right. Maybe Sebi, maybe you can, you can send to Sebi and then uh, he can uh, okay. uh, upload it uh, in the chat. Uh, um, I will do it immediately. Yeah. Please continue, Jeff, uh, with other questions. Do you think... Do you think uh, that there are demoscopic features uh, typical for folliculotropic mycosis fungoides? Uh, that's a nice question. Enzo will reply because we are uh, we just finished another study on uh, the, the spectrum of mycosis fungoides. I mean, not only the classic type, but also the variants. So Enzo, please, uh, please say yes, a few yes, yes, things. yes. Of course. Anyway, by the way, it's a waiting decision. The paper. I hope it will be accepted. Anyway, uh, yes, of course, we have some demoscopic clues. Uh, even here, we have to uh, consider folliculotropic mycosis fungoides into a uh, clinical differential diagnosis. So uh, this condition should be differentiated for other folliculotropic dermatoses. Uh, the main clue 
is the uh, presence of dilated uh, follicular openings, okay? Because, you know, the follicle um, is destroyed by the, uh, the tumoral uh, cellular infiltration. So we have uh, an enlargement of the... Uh, it's like, it's like uh, comedo-like openings yeah? appearing in some way. Yes, yes, it might, yeah. might be like comedo-like openings or just like, uh, you know, red, uh, enlarged red dots. Yeah. Uh, this is the most common uh, clue. Uh, in other folliculotropic conditions, for example, follicular, uh, follicular psoriasis, follicular lichen planus, follicular eczema, you do not have this enlargement mm -hmm. of the follicular uh, openings. This is the main clue. Yeah. But yeah. there are also other, of course, findings. Finally, topical corticosteroids can alter vascular pattern in mucosis fungoides? I think so, right? Sure, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. steroids, definitely. Yeah. And yes, the yes. problem is that they don't change it only mycosis fungoides. The problem yeah. is that change it, they change it also in dermatitis or yeah. in psoriasis, and then that this becomes a trap because you see linear vessels because of the use of steroids, and this this leads yeah. you to, uh, yeah. to to wrong conclusions. Sure. Yeah. By the way, um, I, I would like to hear your opinion concerning a few cases. Uh, related to the topic that I'm going to share in a in a minute. Here we are. So, as you can see here, there is a gentleman with a couple of uh, areas in which we have red uh, plaques. Huh? And uh, here you can see a little bit better uh, the right side of his shoulder. Huh? Definitely, there is a, a differential diagnosis clinically, including... Uh, cutaneous lymphoma. Mm -hmm. This is the other part, the left side, and this is what we can see demoscopically. And as you can, as you mentioned previously, we have all these kind of features that you mentioned, right? Orange color. In my view, this is the, mo the most catchy uh, feature. Of course, branched vessels, arborizing vessels, but not focused. This is the important thing. Yeah. Uh, they are not in focus. Huh? And there is also some white areas. Huh? So definitely we are in the realm of a possible cutaneous lymphoma. But let me, uh, this is the other area, which is basically the same. So speaking about, uh, is there um, a signature pattern? Yes, in this case, there was in some way. Uh, and in you know the point is I want to uh, I'm, you know I'm a I'm a definitely a, a, a simple guy you know so of course we have we have to know that there are many 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 types of cutaneous lymphomas and also in the field of primary cutaneous lymphomas you know because we have of course two two big categories primary cutaneous lymphomas and uh, skin lesions. Uh, 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 related to a systemic lymphoma, eh? a generalized, generalized lymphoma. But speaking about primary cutaneous lymphoma, we have T and B. T, what is the most frequent T type of, because of, of cutaneous lymphoma? Mycosis fungoides. The other types of uh, T cutaneous lymphomas are very rare. And this is also uh, seen in your paper in which you see the prevalence of T cutaneous lymphomas with non-mycosis fungoides were very, very rare. Eh? The, 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 the lowest frequency was belonging yeah. to that. And then we have the group, so T, because it's fungoides, and maybe we can remember Cesare syndrome, which is a, a very rare, but is not exceptional to see it in the practice. And then in the realm of primary B cutaneous lymphomas, we have three main types, eh? which is marginal zone, uh, cutaneous lymphoma, follicle center, uh, B cell lymphoma, and uh, primary cutaneous diffuse large B cell lymphoma leg type. The first two types are uh, not aggressive, Are uh, they are uh, prognostically uh, okay. Eh? We can treat them and the patient will survive. Eh? But there is a, the third type is a very aggressive type. 50% of patients will die. Eh? And this is the diffuse large B cell lymphoma leg type. Okay. So this is the way I remember the 
<laughs> let's say the, the realm of cutaneous lymphomas. So now, back to this patient I showed you before. Huh? Uh, I tell you, it's a cutaneous lymphoma, huh? but it's extremely difficult, as you said. Huh? It's extremely difficult to say if it's a uh, one of these rare T cutaneous lymphomas or uh, T cell lymphomas or a marginal zone, a follicle center, or a, eh, it's more difficult that this is a diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So between these two, it's extremely difficult. Eh? Marginal zone uh, B cell lymphoma is very, very indolent. Follicle center is a little bit more, let's say, uh, nervous in some way, but still, uh, it's a prognostically favorable uh, lymphoma. And this was the case of the previous patient. Here we have another, another lady with, with a similar morphology, eh? clinically, a group of papules and nodules. Eh? So it's an agminated plaque, uh, 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 which is really clinically, uh, you know, we have to build up our differential diagnosis uh, here, uh, zoom up, and then here what we can see demoscopically. Well, in this particular case, uh, I don't know what do you what do you think about it? Do you see orange color? Yeah, on the left, a little bit on the left. A little and, bit, yeah. Yeah, and then we and have white. And white. white. And white. Unfocused linear vessels. Unfocused linear vessels, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So mainly it's a clinical diagnosis. Of course, if I miss in some way, in my, uh, for my estimation, if I miss a clear cut orange color, I start feeling a little bit more doubtful. But still, uh, we are in line with a possible uh, cut, uh, cutaneous lymphoma. The, that, that it was. Here we can see uh, another area in which maybe a little bit of orange color is more clearly visible. Here, another area where we can see more orange color. Now I feel more confident. Huh? And in this case, this was, a, again, a follicle center uh, B-cell lymphoma. Uh, so, agminated papules and nodules. Uh, this is the morphology of these two uh, types of follicle center B-cell lymphomas. Here we have one plaque. Huh? Maybe also reminding a little bit to a morphea, right? Mm -hmm. And here we, we can see uh, demoscopically the the, the uh, you can see the punch biopsy uh, performed on the at the bottom side of this picture. Here we have more in focus vessels, right? Maybe because the skin mm -hmm. is a little bit uh, uh, thinner than previous cases, right? Mm -hmm. But still, in my view, there is some orange color and white color. Huh? So it's a good combination, again, of criteria. So possible cutaneous lymphoma. In this particular case, this was a marginal zone cutaneous B-cell lymphoma. So as one plaque can be treated with uh, uh, surgical excision, uh, radiotherapy. So you have to treat the single lesion, and most probably the patient, the patient will go well. This is another example. Just one nodule. Here you can see a little bit of orange color. How can you interpret these uh, uh, yellow clots? Are they follicles in your view? Uh, yes, it might be. They might be follicular plaques. They're not very clear yeah. from the images, but they yeah, are probably follicular plaques. By the way, yeah. follicular plaques were described in some case uh, reports yeah, yeah, of course. in the past. Yeah. But in, in, in the study, we of course, we found in some cases follicular plaques, but not in, in, in large percentages yeah. in, uh, in lymphomas, yeah. not in yeah. as large as we yeah. expected. Uh, anyway, a little bit of orange color, uh, unfocused linear vessels. Again, this is a marginal zone uh, B-cell lymphoma. So you can see the difference, right? So marginal zone B-cell lymphoma is usually a single lesion, while... Um, uh, a follicle center B cell lymphoma can be multiple, uh, either agminated or in separate lesions. Huh? But look at this other lesion here. This is on the leg of an uh, elderly lady. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, before that dotted vessels are more in line with uh, T cell lymphoma, right? Mm -hmm. 
By the way, if you look closely, these are not dotted vessels. These are uh, small linear vessels, right? And you see this reticulation of white color, huh? uh, kind of uh, reticular depigmentation, a little bit of yet yellow color. Um, and this was one of these uh, more aggressive uh, primary cutaneous diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. So these are more aggressive. Uh, leg type, meaning that they are most, mostly seen on the legs, but this is also uh, a leg type, <laughs> uh, mm. type of B-cell lymphoma. And this is not located, this is much more diffuse. Why? Because it's more aggressive. You see mm. multiple nodules uh, um, uh, uh, located on the trunk, especially, but also on the uh, extremities. Again, yellow color clearly visible in this, in, in this, in this uh, uh, image with, with unfocused linear vessels. And this is again, a diffuse large B cell lymphoma. In these particular instances, the, the treatment is not anymore only local, but the treatment must be systemic with uh, chemotherapy. Uh, and this is another guy suffering from a, a diffuse uh, 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 localization of uh, plaques and nodules. Here you see uh, a, a sample of the lesions, linear vessels, unfocused white color. I don't see too much white, uh, too much yellow, but this is again a lot. But again, but again, I mean this this triplet. Orange, yeah. white, and linear vessels. Yeah. Orange, yes. white, and linear yeah. vessels is exactly. quite repetitive. This was yeah. the main finding in, in the yeah. in the study, and I think that this is quite quite accurate. Quite repetitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is another case: uh, diffuse rash of uh, papules and nodules. Here you see uh, uh, a detail. In this particular case, how do you how do you describe this pattern? A little bit purple, right? Yeah. There are some hemorrhages, yeah. 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 But it's again, linear vessels. Again, huh? linear vessels. Again, a little bit of white color. A little yeah. bit of white color. Also, a lot of purple. Purple is the main uh, feature here. Uh, some other lesions showing different features. Also here, uh, mm -hmm. more, less purple, more unfocused vessels. And this is what? <laughs> Lymphomatoid papulosis. Your yeah. criteria works, work very yeah. well. Huh? Because yeah. this is a uh, purple, the main criteria is purple, uh, meaning that prob maybe it's not a, lymph a lymphoma. Then what it is, what is it? A lymphomatoid papulosis. Eh? This is one of these diseases nobody know, uh, <laughs> nobody knows uh, which category it belongs. I mean, if they should be classified officially in the lymphomas or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, uh, the criteria work very well. And um, so we really have to thank uh, Enzo and, yeah. of course, Emilio for uh, their efforts in the field of, of lesions in which, we, I mean, come on, 10, 20 years ago, we could even not imagine that we were going to study these kind of lesions. In the absolutely, area. absolutely. One crucial point that we might like to comment because I think it's interesting for the uh, attendees is the following. Since here we pay much uh, uh, importance, we give much importance on the presence of orange color, orange or yellow. Maybe we should say something about the light mode uh, of dermoscopy that helps better the visualization of the color because with polarized and non-polarized contact and non-contact, this might change a little bit. Um, well, quite a lot, not only a little yeah. bit. Uh, yeah. So maybe you would like to comment something on this, Enzo? Yes, of course. Um, in general, we can say that when we deal with non-tumoral dermatosis, uh, I advise to use a polarized setting because you know, normal light is reflected by the, the, the corneum layer. So you cannot appreciate very well, you know, underlying structures. So uh, orange color is definitely better seen uh, with uh, uh, polarization. Uh, a few words about the, 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 
the, the interface fluid, uh, we uh, usually perform dermoscopy first without any uh, interface fluid because we can assess even the scaling pattern and then we can put some, you know, uh, oil, for example, to, to better see the underlying structure. So uh, dermoscopy in, you know, general dermatology, uh, let me pass this term, uh, should be done in two steps. First, without uh, fluid interface, and then with the with the oil. Yes, if if I can say something, my friends. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, in general dermatology, we uh, we are focusing a lot on diagnosis, but thermoscopy may be also helpful even in you know in guiding biopsy. Come on, in lymphomas, we need to do a biopsy. We cannot, you know. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, say hello to the patients after performing dermoscopy. We have to have uh, an histological examination, but dermoscopy may guide the biopsy, okay? Because, you know, when we see orange color, it's likely that we have a compact cellular infiltrate. So it's likely that the pathologist will see more, okay? Yeah. So it's a very important uh, part of dermoscopy of lymphomas and other, you know, uh, general other conditions of the Absolutely. general dermatology. What, what, what you're saying is in line with one of the questions, is punch biopsy enough for pathology or do you go for incisional? Let me tell you, we, we very frequently go for incisional biopsy, uh, ellip, elliptic uh, biopsy, to give to the pathologist more tissue. Yes, especially for lymphomas, it would be better to have uh, the entire piece uh, of course, if the lesion is you know very large, uh, we can send just uh, a punch biopsy. You know, millimeter. and so for the pathologist, it's always better to have the entire. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they, they always Even like, if have it's more like that. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> they like to, to get pieces like this. You know, yeah, they... we have to cut a uh, hand, maybe. <laughs> okay, it's feasible. Yeah, yeah. If the patient may sign, you know the. the the, the concept, yeah. There is also a good question from Doriana. Did the patients complain of any symptoms? No, but as a rule, in these cases, we have to do a, a complete staging of the patients. So we have to do CT scans because we have, in, first of all, we have to exclude a possible, um, uh, let's say, cutaneous localization of a systemic disease. And, uh, and therefore, it's obvious uh, that we have to do a complete staging of these patients. Great. Yeah, this is a very important, Jeppe, because if in the study we did not include a secondary lo localization of, you know, extracutaneous uh, lymphomas, but uh, we can say that we had several cases and we can say that there is no very relevant difference on dermoscopy. So, of course... We have to have the the histological information, then the stage in the complete staging. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a last point, a last comment was by Pascal that orange was described as salmon color in previous papers. Yes, yes. Good. Uh, excellent. Enzo, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. For uh, all your work, but also for being with us. Uh, this evening, I feel that the topic was very interesting. We did not have the time to stop, for, not even for a for a second. So uh, I hope that uh, people enjoyed your presence here as much as we did. It was great. It was great to see you again. <laughs> Before leaving Enzo, we have to show show uh, everybody one of his podcasts, right? Uh, well, theoretically, yes. I don't know if... Uh, yes, Sebi is well prepared. Very well, very well. Sebi is so, very, very well prepared. Sebi, please go ahead. Uh, as usually, every week, uh, we remind our participants one of the numerous webcasts of the International Dermoscopy Society uh, that you can find it on our website. And we suggest, in particular, one related to our guest. So we have prepared... Uh, one of the ends so for today. Sebi, if we are ready to show it, it would be great. Here we, Here are. we are. Hello to everyone. In this podcast, I will give you some information on dermoscopy for skin of color. 
Ah, very oh, nice topic. First of all, we all know that dermatoscopy nice has changed our lives in terms of diagnosis. Yes, skin of color is a very important topic. Uh, and very important. And by the way, we have to say that Enzo, among the many things that he does, also leads uh, a significant effort of the International Dermoscopy Society. He leads the working group, uh, the task force on uh, dermoscopy in skin of color, and he already is working on several new projects that we need to do in order to understand how morphology of skin tumors and skin diseases depends and changes according to the uh, to the to the color of the skin. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. Semiology is completely different, so yeah. we 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 have to uh, we have to know a lot about about that. Yeah. I can tell you in a in a very uh, in my in one of my previous lives I was uh, uh, dealing with um, patients from the NATO hospital of the Americans living in Napoli. Of course, I I don't have a, a, a an experience on on uh, uh, dermatology of skin of color, and and when these patients were coming, these Afro American patients are coming, were coming. Uh, I mean, I I was saying to myself, I have no idea because everything is black. We have no erythema, and uh, the one of the only criteria that I was used were using was the location of lesions <laughs> because <laughs> this was just a mess, a complete mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And definitely, the Moscow can be an additional aid in this uh, in this uh, in this scenario. Yeah, yeah, especially if we use you know a systematic approach. We we also validated the uh, the criteria uh, by the EDS consensus paper, even in skin of color. This is another paper, and you know there are some differences. But if we use a systematic approach, I think that we can you know recognize uh, dermatosis even in skin of color on their most people. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Excellent. And so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you for joining us. And, uh, and uh, hope to see you really very soon in person. I hope to. Ciao, ragazzi. Bye, ciao, ciao. 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 Bye, bye, bye. ciao. ciao. So uh, I think that we don't have much time, so we will not show uh, cases sent by the participants today, if you agree. Uh, we will uh, show them together with the ones that we will receive next time, next next uh, week. Let's by remind way, them, let's remind let's, them, let's, by the way. Let's, by the way, remind you uh, that please send us your cases, please, please challenge us either by sending us something which is challenging to diagnose, or if you like to share a very interesting or didactic case that you, uh, that you saw recently, please send it to us. Next week, we will devote several, uh, a big part of the episode for cases sent by you. Uh, now, we don't have the time, so uh, I wouldn't like to do it quickly. Only one. We need to show only one from our dear beloved Penelope, eh? that look what she did. Did you see it, Jerry? No, not yet. No, not come yet. on, look. Whoa, wow, what a nice <laughs> picture. Wow. Come on, the envelopes, the envelopes. So do, wow. do, do, you, do you want to try quickly to, to characterize them? Uh, the one wow. The other? Okay, the, okay, let's do it quickly. From, from left, from top left, to uh, bottom right, okay. Yeah, go, uh, go. Globular nevus, dermatofibroma, blue, blue. nevus, globular nevus, uh, masto xantogranuloma, uh, mm, melanoma versus nevus, uh, seborrheic keratosis with a little bit of too much yellow color, <laughs> melanoma, BCC, nevus, orangioma, orangioma. Orangioma, yeah. Acronivus, Acronivus. BCC, BCC. Uh, ah, this one is very Spermatosa. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is very, very difficult. Very difficult. No and idea. the last one. The, the last, last one, one could be a nevus. Balloon. Yeah? Balloon cell nevus, yeah. Balloon, balloon. And there we go. <laughs> ah, this is the panel of... 
uh, that, that Pascal prepared for us. And uh, Pascal, we thank you so much for all the very uh, cute, very nice things that you send us uh, every week. It's great uh, to have you uh, with us and we thank you very, very much. Mm. So uh, now, last thing. We have five minutes, so we are perfectly yeah. on time yeah. 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 to yeah. play our usual Kahoot. Kahoot. There we go. Yes. So, 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 so. Give me a second. And uh, so what you need to do as usually is to use your smartphones. Go with your smartphones uh, to Kahoot. So www.kahoot. Uh, Uh, dot it and there you will be asked to give the game pin and to enter your nickname or your name or whatever you like uh, do you see the pin in uh, in the screen yes okay nine four nine four five nine very good five cases from last week honestly from last week so these are cases of 2022. <laughs> and uh, the best year, the best year, the best. But are you are you uh, very? Opinion? I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Hmm. Best in general. Best in general, professional and personal. Ah, so nice. So nice to hear yes. your optimism. Yes, definitely. Good. How many? Wow, we have 70 people already connecting. More and more, more and more. Yeah, let's, let's give uh, 20 more seconds, let's say. Yeah. Uh, Charlie says, so, so funny. <laughs> Emilio, are you there? We, we lost Emilio. This is not good. We lost Emilio. I don't know he, if you can hear me uh, uh, still. Sebi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. So Emilio uh, is, uh, of course, going to reconnect, recon reconnect again. Hey. Hey, here we are, here we are, here we are. Here we are, but this was, this was a disaster, really, and I don't know the, which are the consequences of it, my friend. Uh, Why? Uh, because I'm, I'm afraid that now my connection will... Ah, uh, uh, will restart. Okay, we can... We can start again. And also, and also, now, and also now uh, the uh, the Kahoot is not working anymore. Ah. So we have a new pin and they have to do it again. Yeah, yeah, okay, no problem. We have time. But I'm, I'm afraid. Ah. We have time, don't worry. Yeah, so it's a new. A pin which is three three zero seven seven four. Yeah, but I'm afraid that it will recur. Why? Uh, because there is a problem with uh, the connection, and when it happens, it uh, happens again. Okay, uh, let's try. Okay, if it let's happens. try. Let's yep. try. If not, I deeply apologize. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, no problem. You see. I see that the people are looking forward to... Yeah, this is very, very... Uh, and they are very quick. Come on. They're very they... quick. And it's a pity if we will be not able to do it. Uh, yeah, let's hope. Uh-huh. So, let's... Well, let's start, maybe. Yeah. Of course, more are coming because I see that still people are joining. But, uh, yeah, maybe let's start. Yeah. In Let's start five, now. 82 people, four, go. Three, two, one. Let's go. Okay. Ba -ba -ba I'm very curious. So, Monday case. Hmm. This is the clinical, okay, a nodule. On the, on the dorsum of the hand or where? Uh, I don't think so. I don't okay. remember. Okay. This is dermoscopy. Ah. Interesting, eh? isn't it? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And there we go with the first question. Monday case. Basal cell carcinoma, dermatofibroma, squamous cell carcinoma, or melanoma. Uh -huh. 
Do you know what you would vote? Yes, I have my vote. You do, really? Yes. Confident? Do you feel confident? Mm, well, uh, reasonably confident. Okay. Wow. Hey, look at this. A aneurysmatic dermatofibroma. Uh, eh? Very good. Very good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Excellent. We have, we have a core of really incredible experts here, you know, joining us. I agree. I agree. Chichi yeah. is leading. Chichi. Chichi Very good. Very good. Tuesday. What about this, uh, this lesion on the ear? Okay. A little bit annoying in my Annoying, view. annoying. Definitely annoying. annoying. Ah, <laughs> look at this. Okay. Uh -huh. And let's see uh, what the people are going to vote. So is this a nebus, a melanoma, a pigmented actinic keratosis, or a solar lentigo? Uh -huh. Nice, eh? Yeah, very nice. Uh, if we zoom in, probably we will see better uh, the, the clue, right? Uh, yes. In my screen, obviously, it's very well seen, but I don't yeah. know. Ah, but still, still. Yeah, still. still. Come on. Wow. Very good. Very good. Quite yes. ugly from a clinical point of view. Yes, right? definitely ugly. Yeah. Solo yeah. lentigo. But clear cut dermatoscopically. Yeah? Yes, yes. That's clear cut. Okay. Very nice. Chichi remains uh, leading uh, the, uh, the scoreboard. So we go to Wednesday. Uh huh. On the nose, a little bit ulcerated or eroded. Okay. Uh, this is dermoscopy. Okay. Bene. Bene. Uh huh. Okay. If you say bene, let's go. And let's see, do you think that this is an actinic keratosis, a seborrheic keratosis, a basal cell carcinoma, or a squamous cell carcinoma? Ah. Well, the difference between actinic keratosis and squamous cell carcinoma is very difficult. Once you decide to, yes, uh, but I mean, come to vote for a seborrheic keratosis or basal cell carcinoma. Ah, squamous uh, cell, squamous cell. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there, there was a little yeah. bit of ulceration, which, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is more in line with the squam cell. Yeah, good. More in line with squam cell as compared to actinic keratosis. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so SCC. And uh, here Mustafa goes on the first place. Very good. Let's go to the first Thursday case on the nose again from the other side of the nose. Not uh -huh. the same version, of course, not the same version. But uh, uh -huh. quite similar lesion, again, with a, sm a small uh, eroded or ulcerated area. Look carefully at the dermatoscopic features. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there we go. So, again, do you think that this is an actinic keratosis, seborrheic keratosis, basal cell carcinoma, or squamous cell carcinoma? <laughs> Well, uh, knowing uh, your um, psychological attitude, I have my vote. <laughs> ah, no, you are a very bad guy. You're a bad guy. <laughs> there were, um, come on, there were white circles surrounding the phone. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. Yes, but also the vessels at the very periphery, at the very distant well, periphery, are a little bit. But look also outside the lesion. This, yeah, these are not. Yeah. 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 Eh, square muscle carcinoma. Again, yeah. square muscle carcinoma. And here we have many changes today. Yeah. Being salt. Very good. Yeah. And finally, Friday case. On the scalp, clinical, dermoscopy. Okay. Okay. And let's see. Do you think <laughs> an actinic keratosis, seborrheic keratosis, basal cell carcinoma, or squamous cell carcinoma? <laughs> well, I vote for seborrheic keratosis. <laughs> good vote. Yeah. Very good vote. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. Yes, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. So let's see the podium. Let's see the podium. Number three, Chris. Chris. 
Bravo, Bravo Chris. Chris. Bravo. Maya. Maya. Maya number two. And number one. Sea and salt. Sea and salt. Wow. Sea and salt. Yeah. Runners up. Sisi and Mustafa. Very good. If we have sea and salt online uh, and uh, he or she would like to uh, to appear uh, live just to receive our congratulations and uh, to say goodbye together, it would be a great pleasure. Very good. Very good. Very nice cases, by the way. And, um, and uh, you saw a lot of normal and normal skin cancer this week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially squamous cell. Yeah. yeah, squamous cell a lot. Yeah. Do you think that uh, squamous cell is uh, more uh, frequent in your practice uh, as compared to um, to the past? Uh, if squamous cell is more frequent, yeah, right. definitely. But but this is possibly related to our ability to our continuously improved ability to diagnose it earlier and earlier and earlier. So yeah. the images uh, we saw here, for instance. I would say that some years ago would not be so easy to interpret, but now we know that this white color, these follicular criteria uh, are uh, strongly suggestive. Of ah, okay. See and salt is uh, writing. I'm from Ankara, but I can't use microphone now. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. For but I think that this is the second time in a row that we have a winner from Ankara. If yeah. Also, yeah. also the previous one, was from Angara. So you're that, right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great school there. Yes. That, I mean, Turkish uh, colleagues are very, very, very passionate about demoscopy since Absolutely. many, many years. Many, many years. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Emilio. Thank you, everybody. It was a great pleasure to go come back to demoscopy happy hour. Indeed. What about next week? Next week, seven o'clock here. Remember yes. YouTube channel. You, you, uh, on the YouTube channel, you can watch this episode again and all the previous episodes. Yeah, the most could be happy hour. So please register in the uh, in the channel and uh, see us next Sunday at seven o'clock Central European time. Enjoy, ragazzi. Stay safe. Un bacione. Ciao Sebbi. <laughs>